Good afternoon. Welcome here from our studios in beautiful downtown Rochester. We're talking sports with Val. How you doing today, Val? Doing great. Been busy. Having some. It's been a very interesting football season so far, and we'll get to that later. It's been a very interesting soccer season, which I didn't see. We've had some teams that have really stepped up and emerged, especially on the boys' side, and some teams maybe in a little bit of a slump right now. Yeah. We're going to talk all about it here on Talking Sports with Val this evening. We're going to shake it up just a little bit for you tonight. We're going to start off in segment number one, talking cross-country tennis and girls golf. And then we'll come back with segment two. We'll talk some uh, volleyball and we'll talk boys and girls soccer. And then we'll round it out tonight with uh, football talk in segment three as we go into Friday Night Lights coming up here in a little bit. So... Let's start off with cross country. Uh, I know there was a couple of big invitational meets this last Saturday. Uh, all seven of our schools were are participating in either one or the other. The Manchester, you were at. Uh, Valley and Rochester were there. And then over at Caston, of course, Caston was there. Argus and Culver had incomplete teams, but they were there. And then Winnemac and Pioneer. And it was a really good day for Winnemac and Pioneer. Violet Montgomery wins. She had a PR 2019, her best time yet. She's getting really close to bit, getting under 20. And then the uh, Winmac girls also came away with the team championship at Caston as well. Yeah, the Winmac girls are just running great right now. It's, I mean, they're, they're as good as any team in the area, which is maybe not something we're, we were thinking about at the beginning of the year, but they're looking like a potential, not only a regional team, but a potential semi-state team. Uh, you look at, uh, you know, Maggie Smith and then the freshman, Caden Hoover, she's been running really well. Um, you know, Kelsey Wagner, I think, was in the top seven. Mm -hmm. I think she was seventh uh, yeah, the other day. Yeah, three, I think, you said. Three in the, three in the top seven. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, you know, that's great pack running. And then, you, you know, you add Alexis Sheets, Rory Blackman, Kingsley Croft is, you know, running again. She she ran, I think, uh, 25 minutes. She was the number six runner. So this is a good team. I mean, Alexa Sheets, you know, we, we were, you know, she's, we're used to seeing her in softball, but she's mm -hmm. a very, very good runner. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is, you know, this is just a quality team overall, and it seems like they always bring those young runners uh, on the girls' side that are just ready to go and can contribute at the varsity level. They're, they're running really great. And they want a winning, which is beating South Bend Adams, beating a four, you know, beating a, a school that's, what, about what, three, four times their size. Yeah. I mean, that's... Yeah. That's a very impressive accomplishment. And then, of course, Violet Montgomery, like you said, 2019, a great time. And Kylie Ferris was 12th overall. Yeah. So I think ran on the 22s. So. Right. Number two runner from Pioneer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, Macy Baker's the number three runner. So it's it's a pretty, you know, solid Pioneer team. And they look like a potential regional qualifier, too. Yeah. So uh, a lot of good things there. I know you were at Manchester and... A lot of really good times coming out of that one as well. Yeah, again, t times are just dropping everywhere. I think part of it was just the, the weather was much nicer last week. I think temperatures were around 65 degrees when they started running early right. in the morning. I think part of it was just the courses were a lot, you know, both the Manchester and Caston courses are more uh, are, are uh, more runner-friendly, I yeah, guess you'd yeah, say. Flatter. Now, the Manchester invite is probably, in terms of competition overall, it was probably a tougher meet. I mean, talking about Valpo. They were there. All the four, you know, most of the four Wayne schools were there. I mean, a lot of a lot of really good runners were there. Uh, the Rochester boys finished sixth. The Rochester mm. girls finished fifteenth. Mm. It's hard. It's hard to know what to say about the Rochester girls at this point. They're just so banged up. I right. mean, I think we've talked about Madeline Calloway and RSL Ochoa's injuries. Kendall Bradley was out also on Saturday. Oh. She got hurt playing soccer. She took a real hard hard foul. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. I mean it. Yeah, we did that against Culver. Against Culver, yeah. she took a hard foul, yeah. and she 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 was out. So, those are basically three of your top four runners. The good news is that uh, you know Maddie Hines took about two minutes, two and a half minutes off her time from the wow. zebra invite. She took a lot of time off. She looked she looked a lot better, a lot more comfortable out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you know Zoe Seward, you know she took about thirty. You know she finished like in the uh, around seventeenth uh, place or. Uh, in the t she was in the top 20. You know, she won the Zebra Invitational, but I mean, she took about 30 seconds off her time for yeah. the Zebra Invite. So it just goes to show how good a feel this was at Manchester. Right. So, you know, Zoe, I think she's going to run, you know, she's just so reliable. I mean, you know, she's going to run well, and she's just only going to get faster as the season moves on. And, you know, I guess what, maybe the big story was Lucy Rangel, the freshman. I mean, she ran really well, it ran, I think, 21 36. Uh, the only issue with Lucy is that. <laughs> You know, she's a freshman, and this was her first varsity. She didn't run at the Zebra Invite, so this was her first varsity race, and she kind of took it out too fast, which is a mistake a lot of freshmen make. They yeah. they see the pack out ahead of them early, and they feel like they got to 
right. run fast to stay with him, and then by that second mile, they start to feel it. Yeah. And Lucy was feeling it, but then by the third mile, it looked like she had gotten kind of a second win, and she was running well again. You know, so running in the twenty ones for her first race as a freshman, yeah, she did a great job. But it just the the depth, you know, really isn't there for right now. But once they get the you know the cavalry back, it's going to be a good team. Eventually, it's just going to take a while. I think they're hopeful to get Araceli back for the New Prairie Invite, which is September eighteenth, and they hope you know Madeline is she's starting to run. Okay, she ran uh, actually the day of the Manchester Invite. In the early in the morning, she went out for a three-mile run just by herself yeah. on that Manchester course, and so it's a start. Yeah, and the, the Rochester boys had a good day. You said they finished in... Finished sixth, yeah. top five get trophies, yeah. and they missed fifth by one point. One point, <laughs> So a tough day, but this is a good team. I yeah. mean, this is, you know, Peyton Hyatt took about 45 seconds off his zebra invite time, and I think everybody else ran a PR. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dylan Steininger, Wes Steininger, uh, Reese Johnson... Uh, Adrian Ochoa, freshman in his first varsity race. So this is, you know, this this might be a deeper team than it was last year. And of course, Chris Rohr has been their number one runner all year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, this is a good-looking team. Uh, this is a team that, you know, they didn't make it to Sun Lake State last year. That's by Rochester standards, that's not a good year for mm -hmm. them. I mean, they're, at least that's what they're not what they're accustomed to. They seem really determined. I mean, you know, uh, you know. Uh, Wes Sanger ran around 1830. I think his previous PR was 1857. Wow. That's about 27 seconds faster. Dylan's now in the, uh, you know, I think he ran in the 1730s or 1740s. So he's, you know, this uh, this is uncharted territory for these kids. I don't, I don't think he, Dylan had run under 18 minutes prior to this year. And, you know, Chris, you know, Chris Rohr ran, again, he, he took off, and he won the Zebra Invite, and I think he took off about 30 seconds from mm. his Zebra Invite time. So this is... This is a team that, you know, it's a pretty close-knit team, and the, this is a good team. I think that, you know, they have a lot of big goals they they have, they want to accomplish, and I think they're going to be capable of accomplishing them. You know, the problem is in the TRC with Wabash, and Wabash has just dominated the TRC over the last three or four years. Mm -hmm. But you've got the Valley Invite coming up this Saturday, and it should be an interesting meet. It's usually a pretty quality meet. Well, speaking of Valley, they were at Manchester as well. How'd they do? Uh, Evan Myers ran a 1903. Uh, which, which is a PR for him. Uh, no complete team either for the Valley girls or boys. And Chesney Miller ran, I think, 2050, 2050, somewhere around there, which is, I think, the... or 2058, I think. She now owns the three fastest times in school history, and she's yeah. a sophomore. Yeah. So how many of our schools will be at Valley this weekend? Uh, let's see. Argus, Caston, Culver, Rochester, and Valley. Okay. Five. Five of the seven. Yeah, and uh, Pioneer goes to the McConaughey invite. Okay. Winnemac has a weekend off. Weekend off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well deserved after a big win last weekend. Yeah. 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 So. And uh, we should mention on the Winnemac boys' side, Colby Wagner finished in the top 10 yeah. at, uh, at Caston. Yeah. Okay. Anything else cross country wise? Austin Day of Caston was fourth at the Caston invite at his home meet. And so he was the top area finisher of ours in there. And then, uh, you know, right behind him, I think it was. Uh, uh, Baker from Pioneer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jackson Baker. Yeah, yeah. So he think he was fifth. So we had three area runners in the top ten of that meet. So good. That's a pretty good, you know, Pioneer boys team when you talk about, you know, Baker, Leighton Dot, Meyer. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a pretty good top three. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, they got some younger kids that are filling in that, you know, keep dropping time as well. Yeah. With uh, Brooke and, and some of those freshmen. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah uh, Leighton Dot, I mean, I haven't. We haven't talked a lot about him yet this year, but uh, you know he, he had a really good season last year and, and mm -hmm. looking to uh, you know repeat on that. And they're so young too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a potential regional qualifying team. I mean, they'll they'll have to run well, but mm -hmm. it's a pretty good pretty good young team. Yeah, yeah. Any other uh, cross country? We should mention the Culver Middle School boys. Middle school. Okay. They won the Caston Invite Junior High Boys title. Really? That is fantastic. I didn't even know Culver had a junior high boys team. Yeah. That was 15 teams they beat. Yeah. And they had, there are four kids named Stanfast, all of whom finished in the top 10, including one, two, three. So look out for the Culver community junior high boys cross country team in the future. Okay. I think, I think the oldest, I think they're all like sixth and seventh graders. I think they're still like two years away. But this is a great sign that uh, Coach Stacy has, Tina Stacy has built up their. There's a middle school program at Culver. That's great. Yeah, 
Yeah, and they had a full team. Yeah, and they had a full team of boys. And, and, they, got, and they won. So yeah, that's, and they that's, won. Yeah. I mean, so that's just fantastic. I mean, that's great because, again, obviously with any sport at this level, you have to have a feeder system before you can have a really good varsity mm -hmm. program. Well, the problem with Culver is that they haven't had much of a feeder system, so a lot of the kids, you know, they run for the first, you know, they get in high school, and that's the, the first time they've been introduced to running. Well, mm -hmm. now that now we, we have kind of a feeder system developing, that's great. And hopefully they'll be there in high school because a lot of you know that's one of the problems that you run into with Culver is uh, some of those kids end up going down the road because their parents work at the academy and mm -hmm. next thing you know they're they're gone. So hopefully those kids are actually going to be at Culver for high school and and continue that you know success. So, yeah, yeah, that's great that they a not only had a you know a complete team but then they they won out of fifteen. So that's very impressive. Yeah, because there were some big schools there. Yeah, yeah. really big schools. Mm -hmm. So. Any other cross country you want to? No, I think that's uh, yeah. I think that's about it. Yeah, I think yeah. We, we've covered it all. But uh, yeah, I, th I think uh, you know Culver yeah, and Culver has I think what two boys and one girl on their team. I mean, it's a start. Yeah, on their yeah. on their high school team. So it's yeah. a start. Yeah. Well, as we uh, roll over to the tennis court, uh, you know the the Rochester Zebras, uh, you know having having a decent year. I saw mm -hmm. the other day they. Uh, they won five sets to zero on Tuesday. I forget the opponent, um, but then uh, I didn't see what they did. They had a Tuesday meet, and then they had a Wednesday right. meet. They played Manchester on Tuesday. They got started, and then the Lightning came. Okay. So that was uh, that was suspended, and they'll pick up where they left off on September 16th at Manchester. And then uh, that was the Tuesday. And then Wednesday they played Wabash, and they beat them 5-0. Okay, that was the 5-0. And that was a great win. I mean, Wabash is... A, traditional TRC power, but uh, the Zebras were in very fine form on Wednesday. You know, Braden Zink, you know, he, he played really well. He was facing a pretty tough opponent who was kind of, it, it seemed like he was, his opponent from uh, Wabash was kind of changing strategy on him every every point, but he, he was hitting a pretty clean ball, but, you know, Braden, as, once Braden got him to move around, he got the errors started coming from his Wabash opponent, and that was kind of what turned around the mo that match. And then, you know, Brock Bowers is, you know, starting to settle into the number two single spot. And it was funny, Drew Strasser, <laughs> and Drew Strasser is not the most towering individual. I, mm -hmm. I joke about him all the time. And, but he was facing a, a Wabash kid who was even smaller than he was. <laughs> and, he, and, you know, Drew's experience really shone through. And, you know, you know, Drew, having played doubles, I think he's really, you know, at the varsity level. Now he's moved on to singles. I think he's really developed that serve to a point where he can kind of you can really place that serve well, and it, mm. it's it's hard to deal with, especially at that number three singles level, mm -hmm. where a lot of the number three singles players aren't accustomed to that. So, mm. you know, he looked really good, and then you know, one doubles, uh, you know, Cody Smith and Tanner Reinhardt's uh, found a way to eke out a match in three sets. They really just seemed to struggle a little bit in that second set, and then just the third set, it was kind of like a light turned on for them, and they just play, they played great tennis, won six two in the third set, and you know they you know. Tanner is a pretty, even though he's a freshman, he's pretty imposing at the net. I mean, mm -hmm. he, I mean, he, I mean, he, he it's hard to get around him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Cody's, you know, Cody's serve is almost designed when, when Tanner's at the net and Cody's serving, his serve is designed for you to hit it right back at Tanner. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't want to do that, but when his serve is on, it's, it's hard not to do that. And mm -hmm. that leads to a lot of easy putaways. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you know, Cody's a junior, Tanner's a freshman, and, and it's interesting to kind of watch their chemistry develop. Uh, but uh, I asked Tanner after the, afterwards. I said, "What did you learn from from your older brother Kyle, who graduated last year?" He goes, "Nothing." <laughs> he goes, "Nothing." Okay. He goes, "He goes." We would go out and he would beat me, and yeah. that's kind of that was basically the lesson. But he wouldn't say anything. <laughs> yeah, no lesson at all. Okay. Yeah, no lesson at all. Yeah. So, <laughs> Good job, Kyle. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah. <laughs> but then uh, two doubles. You know, that's Robert Vazo and Jake Freeman. That's a nice team. I mean, they won six love, six love over Wabash. So, mm -hmm. and it's a pretty good two doubles team. A pretty athletic two double for a two doubles team. Mm -hmm. More than more than your typical two doubles team. Sure. And then they got another match coming up on Saturday. As Saturday well. morning at home against McConaughey, and of course McConaughey has been a very very good team for a long yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, how about Valley? How are they doing? Uh, had a nice win over Triton the other day. Won three to two. And, you know, Cam. You know, remember Triton doesn't have doubles teams, mm -hmm. so you get two wins right off the bat, and then Cam Manuel won at two singles. So that was the, that was it. Uh, they lost the other two matches, but you know, um, it's pretty nice. You know, it can't. You know, again, Valley like Rochester, no seniors. Um, uh, Dylan Neese lost a really tough match. Um, 
and then he came back and he won against John Glenn on uh, Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, Valley as a team lost four to one, and Dylan's mm-hmm. win was their only point. Yeah. But that's a very good John Glenn team right. that has uh, they've. They're among the better teams in the NIC, mm-hmm. so that's not a terrible loss, but uh, yeah, it's a pretty good Valley team. I really like their one doubles team with Anakin Pettit and Cooper Walls. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm really looking forward when they face Cody Smith and Tanner Reinhardt's coming up on Monday. Yeah, Glenn is almost uh, equivalent to Peru, you know, as far as you know, conference-wise, I would say, right? R- R- yeah, I mean, yeah. they're they're kind of the the cream of the crop when it comes to the conference there. Yeah, they have been for a long time. I mean. I even know about that. So. Right, and they have a lot of, uh, you know, those those names on John Glenn's team look pretty familiar They're from their baseball team, and of course their baseball team is always good every year, so yeah, uh, yeah. the Stevens kid is the number one single player. So Yeah, and you know, for Valley, I mean, we weren't, I'm not saying we weren't expecting much, but they graduated a lot, and mm-hmm. it's a pr- pretty young team, and, and I think Coach Kendig has really uh, done a good job getting this team to the point they're at. Yeah, and I mean they have you know eight or nine players, which is again a good sign. It's, right. That doesn't, that doesn't sound like a lot, but remember when he took over, they had three, so right. they're up to nine. So kids are getting interested in the sport. They're playing the sport over the summer to get ready. I mean when you when you play the sport during your off season, I think that's a good sign. Yeah, because this tennis racket isn't something you can just pick up and and you know go two weeks and then start matches. Oh yeah, matches. so much is about touch and feel yeah. and instinct. Yeah, yeah, muscle memory. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess you can say that about a lot of sports, but tennis especially. Right, right, because there's just so much to it, mm-hmm. technically wise. Yeah. So, all right. Any other tennis activities you want to bring up? Uh, no, just the Rochester Valley match is coming up on Monday. So Monday. To that. So the Rochester has home on Saturday against McConaughey. Is that uh, where's Rochester Valley at? I believe it's home. Home. So yeah, be a, a big couple of matches, conference matches, and of course, you know, every every time you face Valley, it's always big, right? Yeah. For Rochester. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, the beginning of a uh, big week. Uh, yeah, and the beginning of a two-year rivalry since neither Rochester nor Valley has any seniors. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll be looking forward to uh, to that. Uh, how about links? How's the how's the golf season going? I you're going to have to guide me on this one because I haven't. Rochester's been struggling a little bit lately. They lose to Logansport 184 to 202. That's a young Logansport team. No seniors on their team. Of course, Rochester's pretty young themselves. I mean, with you know they've got Kat Rensberger, but she was the only uh, uh, you know one of the main you know of the main uh, players in Rochester team was a senior. You know, again, Ava Thomas and Peyton Moore have been kind of trading off on who's the number one. It's almost like a one and one A situation. And Ava has been. Number one recently, but Peyton was the co-medalist. Uh, Ava was the uh, low scorer for Rochester on Tuesday in the loss to Logansport. They lost 184 to 202. Then they played Plymouth and Bremen in a three-way match on Wednesday at Rock Hollow. Excuse me, uh, Ron Barn Golf Club at Mill Creek. It was a home match for Rochester. Plymouth had 182, Rochester had 200. Bremen had an incomplete team. They only had two golfers. Uh, Peyton Moore, though, was tied for medalist honors with uh, Hannah LaFree of Plymouth. So they each had a 43. So again, it's... With with Ava and and Peyton, they're kind of the two players who are above everybody else, and then uh, you know you've got Kat Rensberger and Delaney Barkman, and the five has been kind of rotating every year, kind of who's been the hot hand. Mm-hmm. I think you know Avery Broyett's get gotten some looks there, mm-hmm. Reagan Becker, Savannah Eccles. Mm-hmm. How about the Valley girls? I know they were uh, kind of going through a, a few uh, struggles there for a while. Are they kind of getting out of it, and they've or? been running into the weather too. They had a you know that that. You know, they were hoping for a big match on Tuesday, and then the lightning came. So, and, uh, you know, I was talking with Adam a lot the other day because we just need to get on the course right now. We, we've been running into some bad weather, and we, because mm-hmm. we're, we, we're not going to get better by not playing, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, just, you know, they struggled somewhat. And, uh, you know, in that match against McCona, you know, that three way match against McConaughey and Rochester, McConaughey beat both Valley and Rochester at Round Barn, which is pretty impressive because that's. Well, Both Rochester others. and Valley had the home course advantage. Mm-hmm. You know, Valley, you know, shot a 171 earlier this year, which was a school record, but they only shot 191 in that match, so scores aren't heading in the right direction, and I can, you know, you can see why Coach Malott's concerned. Mm-hmm. But again, it's it's a solid, you know, again, Madeline Weaver, she's their number one, and she can rely on her. She hits the ball straight and long off the tee, but then it's the uh, it's kind of two, three, four, five. It's kind of who's going to step up with mm-hmm. Kings Malott and Molly Moriarty and Lily Ault and Cheney Canada. Any one of them can. Mm-hmm. You know, but so we'll see. We got the TRC uh, tournament coming up this Saturday mm-hmm. over at Maple Grove and Huntington. Valley won the TRC tournament last year at Maple Grove, so they're used to this course. They played well in it before. 
Last year, the girl who stepped up was Lily Alt. Who knows who it'll be this year? Mm -hmm. But right now, you'd have to say McConaughey, the Lady Braves are the favorite. I mean, McConaughey set their school record before the pandemic, or before they got before their pause. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they remember they were paused for like three weeks, right? And they basically just picked up right where they left off when they came out of their pause and beat Valley and Rochester. So you have to say the Lady Braves are the favorite at this point, but I think Valley is going to again. They were probably they might have been the favorite going in last year, and Valley upset Valley surprised everybody. So who knows? Right. With Rochester, I think, again, it's again they haven't beaten Valley or McConaughey this year. I mean, they lost to Wabash. I'm guessing fourth, fifth place would be maybe a reasonable goal. Mm -hmm. Well, and you never know. Like, you you can look at it on paper, and until you actually go out on the course, and and you never know if you have somebody like an alt that, that steps up and yeah, and has a really good score. So you know, sometimes. And that kind of seems to be contagious too, a little bit. You yeah. Know, if somebody's hitting really well, next thing you know, everybody's kind of hitting really well, and you might get something, you know, catch a little lightning in the bottle or something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, Kat Kat Rensburg is a four-year varsity player. I mean, maybe you know, if she could be that solid number three, that would help. Like mm -hmm. that could really help, you know, to join Peyton and Ava. Yeah. Uh, what else is going on in the golf world? That's uh, Winamac, Pioneer, all the you know Culver, all those guys. How are they doing? I uh, haven't heard a lot from Culver and Pioneer lately. Uh, obviously, Pioneers, you know, they just have those two golfers. Culver, I, I, I didn't know what happened to them the other day. They might have ran into the weather. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, you know Winamac, uh, uh, they're you know they're looking pretty good. I mean, they shot a 181 the other day against Rensselaer. It's a very good score for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it might have been a season low. Again, you've got kind of a real solid top three when you talk about Kira Businski, Bianca Huizar, and Janet Calfi, and then you know Olivia Link and Giselle Lowry. It's a good team. They're the defending Hoosier North champions, mm -hmm. and the Hoosier North tournament is coming up this Friday morning. Yeah, I at, saw that Friday at, morning. The, yeah, because uh, like a ten a.m. Yeah, start? 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, yeah. 10 a.m. Uh, North Judson and Chesapeake Run. Right. And so, yeah, uh, you know, they, again, Winnemac shot a 438 to win that tournament last year, and Coach uh, Rodebush said, we're much better than we were last year. So yeah. uh, you'd have to say they're the favorites going in because they returned most everybody from last year's team. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, 10 a.m. On, uh, on Friday probably already happened by the time you see this. But yeah. uh, that's a... It's a weird time, you know, in the middle of the school year to have a, a Friday yeah. morning. We had been told they were having trouble, you know, just finding a course and a time that would fit everybody. So hmm. I guess they decided on Friday morning and everybody gets out of school. Yeah, there you go. Sometimes see that, you know, when they get into the postseason sectional and stuff like that. But yeah. uh, a little uh, bonus out of school time. <laughs> yeah. I'm interested to see if, you know, Pioneers Ashlyn Brook can make the all-conference team. I think she'll be right, right in that mix. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Culver, you know, somebody like A.J. Hines, you know, could she maybe step up and yeah. make the all-conference team? And it, they just kind of take a, a top... Uh, I believe it's top top eight. Top eight of top the eight scores. Or, right, at TRC, it's top ten. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. our time, and uh, at uh, Chesapeake Rung, if you want to go, it's up there uh, right around North Judson, so... Yeah. Yeah. There's always a lot worse ways to spend than walking around a golf course for in the sunshine for. Yeah, three, weather's hours. supposed to be nice. Yeah, I mean you can't complain about the weather this mm -hmm. time of year. And mm -hmm. finally, you know, like you said, with that uh, with those invites last weekend. I mean, from the weekend before, <laughs> it was definitely a little different uh, yeah. feel in the air for sure. Yeah, but obviously we're getting down to the nitty gritty in golf season because you got conference tournaments just about everywhere on the state this weekend, and then sectionals are next weekend. Wow. Well, Already into it. Yeah, we've got uh, yeah we've got the Warsaw sectional, which is coming up on Saturday, September eighteenth, with Rochester and Valley, and then on Monday the twentieth, we've got the sectional at Twin Lakes at Tippecanoe Country Club in Monticello with Pioneer and Winnemac. Yeah. And then Culver goes to the uh, Laporte sectional that day on the twentieth. Okay. So they they get another, they get two days off school, one for the conference tournament, one for the sectional tournament. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, we're going to wrap up segment number one. We will uh, be back here in just a moment, and we'll talk some volleyball and soccer in the second segment here. We're talking sports with Val. We'll be right back. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. 
Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 160,000 participants here in Indiana who take part in high school sports. First Federal Savings Bank can help remodel your home, consolidate debt, or even provide some spending cash with our home equity line of credit. Our standard home equity line of credit allows you to draw funds for up to 10 years and has no closing costs for qualified customers. Take advantage of this great opportunity. Contact one of our loan experts or apply online at firstfederalbanking.com. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. All right, welcome back here. We're talking sports with Val for a uh, Friday here in early September. And, you know, we, we just talked about, uh, you know, golf and, and how that's already winding down and, and getting into sectional time here in about a week and a half. And, boy, it's hard to believe. It seems like we just got going with the fall sports. and But the golf did get started a little sooner than, than the other sports, so you can kind of see that. Uh, so here in segment two, we're going to talk some volleyball and we're going to talk some, some soccer. Um, Volleyball-wise, the Rochester Zebras, and uh, you know we're filming this on Thursday, so they have a huge match on uh, Thursday night at Southwood. Turns out this is going to be their opener because of uh, you know they were on a little bit of a pause. They missed the Peru match, and so their TRC opener is going to be at Southwood, who... You know, they just came in as uh, the number 11 team in 1A, so, you know, they should be, you know. So how, how do you see, I mean, it looked like the, the Zebras were kind of moving in the right direction, even though they had a tough one against the Academy. Um, but they, they seem to have some pieces that are working together better with this young squad. Yeah. But coming off of a pause and then going on the road, I mean, how do you how do you uh, manage that? Yeah, and this will be their first ma match in two weeks. Yeah. Long pause, a lot early long pause. Because remember, the schedule was designed for there to be a one week pause, one week break anyway between the Peru match and the Southwood match. Mm -hmm. So now it's it's been two weeks, and they got you know. So and of course, you know, hopefully they can stay healthy because once they, I mean, once they get through this, I mean, the schedule is going to hit them hard now. I mean, they're going to be they're going to be really busy for the next three four weeks. Um, you know, now one question they they've been dealing with they were dealing with some injury issues before the the pause. Mm -hmm. So will everybody come back healthy? From what we've heard, they started practicing on Monday this week after the after a week off. So they should be pretty, you know, pretty well conditioned going into the Southwood match, which is always important because that Southwood match always seems to go four or five sets every year, and it comes down a lot of times. It comes down to we don't talk about conditioning a whole lot in volleyball compared to maybe football or cross country, sure. but or soccer, but yeah, conditioning matters in volleyball too. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you and especially in these rivalry matches. And Ro Rochester Southwood is the best rivalry in the TRC volleyball wise, mm -hmm. without question. It might be the best rivalry in the TRC in any sport. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, you get so hyped up and then you start hyperventilating, and yeah, your conditioning has to kick in at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, Emily Hughes was playing great volleyball before mm -hmm. the pause. Let's let's see if she can keep that up. She right. can, she, I mean, she can dominate mm -hmm. uh, when she's on, and they might need her to be. But again, Southwood plays so hard; they will do anything to keep the ball off the floor. I mean, mm -hmm. they will they will die to keep the ball off the floor. I mean, they will do anything, and that's the way Southwood has always played. And you know, I, I with Tom Finnicle to coach teams, I know that's the way it's going to be again this time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, can Rochester be up to that challenge? You know, because they're going to have to keep the ball up off the floor well, and can that block? The block was really coming along before the pause for Rochester. Mm -hmm. If their block can be imposing, because I think the Rochester probably have a little bit of a height advantage. If they can do that, I think keeps Southwood a little bit off the net, that'll make their job much easier. Yeah. And then, again, the key, with these matches always, it comes down to serve-receive. You've got to be able to pass the ball and get it to your setter mm -hmm. and just play clean volleyball because, you know, the, those out-of-system points are going to happen, but the, the more cleanly you can return serve. That, that was a big, you know, Southwood had a couple of, by their standards, down years because they, they just weren't able to really pressure teams with their serve. It seems like they've gotten better at that lately from based on the results that I've seen. I haven't seen Southwood play in person yet, but it seems like they're starting to pressure teams with their serve a little bit more, so that Rochester back row's got to be ready. Yeah. You know, when you talk about Kylie Houston and, uh, you know, uh, Riley Holloway and those mm -hmm, girls. Mm -hmm. And they seem to really be playing well right now, or they were before, you know, so hopefully right. they can I mean, be. you know, the, the Triton match was two and a half weeks ago now. We, sure. They looked really well, but they only they played really well. They've only played one set. And that Culver Academy team, look at 
That's a, that's a good Culver Academy sure. team. Look at their ranking there. They they're almost top, took them to five. Yeah, that's a Culver Academy team that's top 15, top 20 in Class 3A. They're mm -hmm. a good team. Yeah. Yeah, and they were they were really close to taking them into a fifth set. Yeah, in in that one. And yeah, now the the computer rankings the, or ratings I should say rating because it's basically a computerized rating system, and they have South Central as the favorite in the sectional right now. Yeah. South Central's ten and one, but mm -hmm. have they played this type of schedule that Rochester has? Mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say that they haven't. But it's interesting to note. How can you trust the ratings at this point when you're talking about a team that hasn't played in two weeks? So, right, right. Yeah. Something, something to look out for. Yeah. Uh, South Central definitely looks like the best team in the Porter County Conference. Yeah. Well, and and you know, as you talked, we're winding down the golf season. We still got quite a bit of volleyball to be played. Right. Just just now, really getting into conference. Right. Sectionals won't start until October 14th. Mm -hmm. So, that'll, so there's that'll a, to go. there's a lot. Almost mm -hmm. a month. Uh, actually, more than a month. Right. And remember, Rochester after you play Southwood on Thursday, and they go to that big Harrison tournament on Saturday. That is a beast of a tournament. You've mm -hmm. got all kinds of good teams, including <laughs> including those Lady Panthers who will be there yeah. too. I mean, that is a tough tournament. There's no easy draw on that tournament. So, mm -hmm. again, they're gonna, uh, iron will uh, the iron sharpens iron. They'll be yeah. Uh, again, the, the, there's no let up in the schedule. Yeah. So let's just hope everybody's safe and healthy. I mean, uh, yeah, you know, one one person that I know was a little a little sore was Lexi Thomas. I I don't know. Have you heard anything? How uh, I think she had maybe a, a muscle pull in yeah. her abdomen area. Yeah, she had an, some sort of abdominal injury. Were mm -hmm. from what we heard, so I don't know it's still that. kind of uncertain. Yeah, uh, and yeah. it's it's something you really want to take care of because you know she's a really good basketball player as well. Right. You don't want that to be a nagging thing to to go into her senior year of basketball. Yeah. So, especially if you're Coach Jennings. <laughs> yeah, but Lexi is she's as tough as it comes. I mean, if it's oh, yeah. if she's hurting, she's hurting. Yeah, yeah. Um, how about uh, Valley? I, I think uh, mm. you know you'll agree with me that uh, maybe we're a little uh, surprised how well they're doing. I saw them play the other night against North Miami. They beat them in three. They're, this is a good-looking team, uh, and you know they've been. You know, we talk about Rochester's injuries. I mean, they're not going to get any sympathy from Valley because look at Valley's injuries. No Bree Sheets the other night. No Ava Smith the other night, and they put in put two freshmen in the lineup to replace them, and McKaylee Costello and Avery Wagner, and they did not miss a beat. Mm -hmm. They look great. McKaylee Costello looked really comfortable playing in that front row, hitting from the outside. Avery Wagner is just she's just a great young athlete. I mean, I mean we're gonna have a lot of fun watching these girls for the next three four years. Mm -hmm. And they they got a big match uh, Thursday night after probably you know, it'll probably already be done mm -hmm. by the time you see this. But uh, Triton coming in to right, do, Triton uh, comes Valley. to Valley, yeah. Then that's you know a Triton team that won their one A sectional last year, so that'll be a pretty good test. But one thing I like about Valley is their serving. I don't know if you've talked about that enough, but Braden, you know, every serve is a little bit different on that team. Mm -hmm. You know, Braden Bainey's serve, uh, Avery Wagner had a really nice serve. Erica Henderson is somebody who's been coming off the bench, and you know, just put, they can put her in the back row, and she's just you know everywhere. She's got a really nice serve as well. You know, Mallory Durkis has been as a good serve. So this is, you know, every this is a really quality team and coach Durf is, you know, you can see that you know, she you can tell that she likes her players and she's really, you know, comfortable coaching them and here they are, they're 4-0 in the TRC. Yeah. Good start. Yeah, now their schedule will get tougher, tougher. as it goes. I mean, they haven't played Rochester yet. They haven't played Southwood yet. Mhm. Mm they haven't played Northfield yet, so they've got some work to do. But they're gonna—I think they're gonna be right in the mix. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They're—I uh, I think maybe a, a year ahead of where we thought they might be coming in with a, with a new coach again. And uh, yeah. you know, you got to give a lot of credit to the kids, but you got to give a lot of credit to Coach Durf as well. I mean, she's, yeah. and and they knew her, right? right? It's not like she was out of the, you know, out of the area yeah. coming in. So they knew who they were dealing with, and she knew who she was dealing with. And, yeah. Carly Hogue, I should mention her. She her serve is another. It's she's got one of those jump serves that just it's handcuffing people. Mm -hmm. And you know Macy Kirkenstein at that center spot. She's really kind of stepped in. She you know I, I talked you know she talked about you know knowing Hannah Engstrand from last year and kind of following her lead as a mm -hmm. setter. Even though she kind of said, "Hey, I, I knew as soon as last season ended that I I might have to step into that setter role," and I'm kind of waiting for that moment. I think she's really stepped up and did a great job. Done a great job so far. Yeah. Yeah. Got a good lineage of setters at Valley. Yeah. You know, they, they seem to anyway. So uh, Valley and Rochester, you know, both TRC teams. In uh, Hoosier North Conference, you know, we have uh, obviously Culver, Winnemac, uh, Pioneer, and, and Caston. Of course, Pioneer, you know, they're the kind of cream of the crop as far as 1A uh, volleyball goes. They're, I think, number 10 this week mm -hmm. in the poll. Uh, they've had, uh, you know, probably... Uh, 
if you look at their record, I guess, uh, you know, they got four losses, but you also got to look at who those losses are against. And, you, oh, you know, my. you talked about that Harrison tournament this mm -hmm. weekend. They're going to be there, like you said, as mm -hmm. well. They don't shy away from competition. They don't shy away from big schools at all. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that pays off when it comes down to the sectional and, and beyond. Yeah, I think Andrean's going to be down at Harrison this weekend. Andrean's ranked number one in 2A. I mean, they, they're, they yeah, it's going to be a formidable competition, you know, a formidable competition no matter who they draw. But you look at Pioneer, I mean, they've, again, I know there have been, you know, especially when they lost to Northwestern, there's maybe a little bit of concern like, hey, didn't they beat Northwestern last year? But, again, that's a Northwestern team that's just huge size-wise that just towers over everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, you hear Coach Nye, he talks about ball control a lot, and I think they control if they can control the ball from the back row. I think they have plenty of off. There's, there's no doubt they have plenty of offense from the front row to win. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the rating system has Pioneer at number ten and Southwood at number eleven in Class One A. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you know I've I've seen and a the lot sectionals of, at Southwood, by the way. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I've seen a, I've seen a fair amount of, of Pioneer volleyball this year, and you know. You still got to remember, you know, you talk about, well, they beat Northwestern last year, but they graduated three starters, three big time starters, two of which are playing collegiately mm -hmm. volleyball. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so there, there's no lack of depth, but just the putting the pieces together. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's almost as, as much of a challenge, you know, having as many people that are capable as they do right. versus not having enough. I mean, it's, you know, how do you, how do you piece them together? How do you keep everybody happy? How do you, you know, put those pieces together? Right, because inevitably, once you get to the middle of October, you probably have to narrow down that rotation sure. a little bit, those yeah. rotations a little bit. But, yeah, and you're going to have yeah. some people that probably are, you know, why am I not playing? Yeah. And who probably would play a lot, you know, mm -hmm. in, a, in another school. It's just the way it is when, mm -hmm. you, when you're trying to win another championship. Yeah. But I, I thought they played pretty well. I think they put, especially those first two sets against Knox the other night. Mm -hmm. you know, they won it in three. The third set was 25-23. That was a little maybe... Yeah. Too close for anybody's comfort, but they pulled it out. But the first two sets, I thought they were in top form there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Caston, record-wise, probably not what they would hope. But, you know, you got a lot of young players there as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for most of those girls, you know, this is probably their third sport. Mm -hmm. But uh, they seem to be, you know, coming into their own a little bit here as of late. They had a nice win over Lewis Cass at Lewis Cass the other night. You know, Isabel Scales... You know, it was everywhere. Maddie Smith is everywhere. I mean, those are kind of the two leaders of this team in terms of you kind of just expect a little bit of everything for them. You know, Abby Williamson is a great blocker on the front, and then you know, with Williamson and the scales, when they're yeah, that's a pretty formidable block. I mean, the, we talk about you know the differences in kind of classes for volleyball teams. There aren't a lot of great one A volleyball teams in terms of the block. Mm -hmm. Pioneer is one of them, and I think Caston's getting to that point too. Yeah. With Williamson and Scales, and even sometimes Maddie Smith up front, though Maddie's maybe more of an outside, so that that's a good sign. And then you've got Addison Zimpleman; she's really reliable in the back row. And then you know the two setter system; I think they're figuring it out with Annie Harsh and Delaney Lowry, because mm -hmm. that was kind of the, that was kind of the issue coming into the season. You know, what would they be like after Rebecca Milburn graduated? Mm -hmm. But it seems like they're they're really figuring it out. And again, these girls are pretty tight knit, and I think having you know again communication is such a big part of volleyball as well. Mm -hmm. So even though it might be their third sport, I think because of their familiarity with each other, I think they could figure it out. Right, right. And if you watch any uh, cast in girls' sports, you know, all those names are familiar. Yeah. You know, basketball, softball, yeah. volleyball. I mean, it's it's all kind of the same group of girls. And Yeah. I, I put Maddie Smith up with just about any player in the, with any player on the Pioneers team. I mean, she's, she's really, really good. I mean, mm -hmm. she can play all six rotations, front row, back row, hitting, digging, serving, serve, receive. I mean, she, she does everything for that team. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, if you look at uh, Culver and Winnemac, I would kind of put them to, you know, kind of in that yeah. second tier, you mm -hmm. know, Caston, Culver, Winnemac, kind of that second tier of conference teams. Kind of young, both teams pretty young. I think Culver's got, you know, a lot of really good talent. I think, you know, if you look at Winnemac, they've had probably as many, if not more, quarantine issues mm -hmm. on their volleyball team as, as any volleyball team, even Rochester. Yeah, I saw with Culver that... Uh... Coach uh, Katie Falke stopped by Culver practice the other day. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, saw that familiar with, for Rochester folks. Familiar to Rochester folks. Yeah. And, of course, uh, Andrea Barrett, the yeah. Culver coach. She is a Rochester grad. So, right. 
you know, Coach Felke is something of a mentor to her. So I'm, it's, it was great to see Coach yeah. Felke looked uh, at home on a volleyball court. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Colorado had a nice one over Argus the other day, swept him in three. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is a team that's, uh, again, you know, we talk about cast and familiarity with one another. Culver is trying to get to that point, right. and it's just going to take some time. Mm -hmm. You know, Chloe Dante is doing a nice job as a setter. You know, Brent Barrett seems to be doing a little bit of everything. Lucy Overmeyer seems to be doing a little bit of everything. Grace Seaver played very, very well against Argus the other day. So it's just Avery Garland's really been stepping up lately. So it's mm -hmm. just the familiarity aspect, trying to get to that point that, see, a school like Caston is at. Yeah, and... As you get those freshmen worked into it, too, because they're going to probably see a lot of uh, time when we get into basketball as well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these same girls, kind of like what we said with Gaston. Yeah, you know. Make Megan Pearl has been a big part of that yeah. group, too. Yeah. So Culver's getting better. And then, uh, you know, uh, at Winnemac, uh, again, they, another COVID pause last weekend, so they couldn't go to Kankakee Valley for a tournament that they wanted to go to. Uh, they were on pause for five days, so and then they came back to play West Central at home on Tuesday night. They won that in four, so a nice job. But again, Coach Caston had to rejigger her lineup with who she had available to her. Mm -hmm. um, again, Kaya Campbell's been just so solid all year at that setter spot. And, uh, you know, Alyssa Villanueva and Mackenzie Hines are the top two hitters on that team. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of, the parts are kind of fitting in around them. You know, Lauren Friedel is back. You know, uh, Chloe Roush is developing more confidence, so it's kind of developing those other players besides maybe those big three, Campbell, Villanueva, and Hines. Mm -hmm. Their numbers weren't really good to begin with, and then they keep seeming to have people getting, you know, dinged with quarantines. Uh, I, I, I can't imagine how frustrated Coach Caston has been, but she's been, you know, she always exhibits a positive attitude, so... Mm -hmm. and th this has to have been testing for her, because it, it, yeah. it was a problem last year as well. Yeah, I don't know how many matches they've played with seven or eight girls. Yeah. You know, and and not the same seven or eight girls from match to match. And Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a nice way to bounce back after a tough loss to Knox last week to beat West Central. Mm -hmm. Any other volleyball you want to talk about? No, not really. I mean, I, I think that's, that's about it. I'm just really... We're really... I think the season's kind of... We're going to second year now. We're almost third year into the season. This is... Sure. Now we got a lot of tournaments coming up. Hopefully everybody stays healthy and safe. Yeah, conference play is really starting to wrap up, ramp up. Uh, you know, Knox was Pioneer's first conference matchup, and they've got Caston coming up. They were supposed to play last week, and mm -hmm. uh, I think that's coming up next week. So that yeah, the Pioneer Caston one. matchup is coming up next Thursday, the sixteenth. Yeah, so that'll be a big one for mm -hmm. for both schools, mm -hmm. and you know that, that seems to be as. as as those girls, you know, you talk about those girls from Cast, and obviously the, a lot of those girls from Pioneer, you know, do all those same sports, mm -hmm. and so, you know, that that rivalry mm -hmm. is is mm -hmm. really really getting to be a big one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff coming up. Um, so, move to the pitch. Talk a little soccer here in this segment as well. Um, you know, one of the one of the schools I guess you talk about that uh, maybe having a, some struggles. Uh, the Argus Dragons, I guess. Um, you know, they, they come off, uh, I think, what, four wins in a row, but then they lost to uh, Plymouth pretty handily the other night. Yeah, they lost Plymouth to Plymouth 7-2 to two on Wednesday night. I was there. Uh, Argus led that game 2-1 to one with three minutes to go in the half. Really? Plymouth scored late in the half to tie it, and then that just seemed to turn around the momentum. And, boy, <laughs> Plymouth, they are, they are a heck of a team to watch. They are fast, and they are fundamentally sound. I mean, they, you know, Selvin Pagoda of Plymouth, he is as, I mean, he. we're talking about Damon Binkley and that Damon Binkley class of players. He is a special talent. Wow. I mean, he had a couple goals that are just like, wow. Like, did you see that type mm -hmm, of goals? Mm -hmm. I mean, it looked like Argus had two men marking him, and they he still got loose. to yeah. make, and just He's just kind of this instinctive, quick player. I, Todd Van, I talked with Argus coach Todd Vanderweel after the match. He goes, Selvin Pagoda gives me nightmares. He keeps me up at night. He goes, mm -hmm. oh. He he was tough. Uh, unfortunately, the game was stopped with about two minutes to go. There was a Plymouth player at a serious looked like leg injury. Looked like maybe a, I couldn't tell if it was like a broken leg or a serious knee injury. But it, he was in awful pain, and mm -hmm. they had to carry him off on a stretcher and carry him out in an ambulance. So we hope he's okay. Uh, Rebollo, Rebollo, Rebollo from Plymouth. Mm -hmm. So uh, thoughts and prayers are with him because. Yeah. Josh Overmeyer was the head referee last night. He took one look at the injury. He just said, no, nah, this, this game's over. Mm. 
So hopefully he can get back. But I mean, Ar Argus was pretty competitive for a while. I, I, I can't, you know, the, the message that Todd Vanderbilt just told his team afterwards is, you know, we can't let up. We can't, you know, we've, we've got, you've got to hustle and play. Give it your all at, at all times against these mm -hmm. tough opponents. Because these matches against Plymouth, when you're in a 1A sectional, matches against Plymouth are kind of like a, like a luxury almost. Like, right. Like, boy, these will really get us ready for a 1A state tournament. I mean... Right. For, now it's going to be first game of sectional kind of thing. Now it's going to be the type of team you're going to be facing in the sectional. Right. Yeah. So uh, that was kind of the message. I, You know, I... Th you know, I, I, I asked him, I said, is the, is the, does this loss feel different from those Warsaw and Oak Hill games at the start of the year? And I, I sensed that he felt a little bit, yeah, that they they are. Remember, they were coming off four straight shutouts before allowing seven goals to Plymouth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Kurt Johnson, I think he, he did as well as he could. I mean, some of those shots he had to face last night, I mean, he was, he was under pressure all night long. You know, they're bringing along some young players, kids like Ethan Petz, uh, Bo Fishburne. You know, two young freshmen who, had a, you know, I mean, you know, Plymouth was putting pressure on those guys last night. I mean, that is a trial by fire. I mean, that yeah, is, yeah, that is something. You know, Ted, you know, Teddy Renninger has been great. He just he couldn't get a whole lot of touches, especially in the second half. Coach Vanderweel thought maybe fatigue might have been a little bit of a factor in the second mm -hmm. half. Uh, you know, and then then they get a couple of big players back from, uh, well, suspension. I think. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to name names, but. Yeah. They get two big players back from suspension on Saturday, so and they'll for be their, back to full our, strength. They'll be back to more of a full strength type team and two of their two of their better players. You know? Yeah. And that but that's a, that's another tough tournament coming up on Saturday. You got Argus and South Bend Adams in game one, that'll be tough. Game two, Zionsville and Northwood. Mm. <laughs> there aren't many four team tournaments that are better than that. Yeah. Yeah, some some really good schools and I don't know if you if you haven't seen Zionsville play, uh they're good. Yeah. They're really good. I think Northwood uh, kind of shocked them. Uh, was that last year or the year before? I that, think last year they did, yeah. Yeah, Northwood came in and, and kind of shocked them a They're in the bit. top 20 in two-way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, well, it'll be a good test because, uh, you know, like you said, it, it's going to be, you know, hard from, from game one in, yeah. in that sectional. Two guys have stepped up, and I wanted to give them a little bit of a shout-out, Aiden Mills and Caden Brady. Mm -hmm. uh, Aiden took a hard shot to the face last night. I hope he's doing okay. It looked like maybe like a bloody nose. He took mm. a... But he he's he plays fearlessly. <laughs> he, the way he plays, I'm not. <laughs> I hope he's okay. But boy, he he's not afraid to literally stick his nose right in the mm. middle of things. Mm. And he might he's not good. be doing that so quick next yeah. time though. Caden Brady, he he's been playing really well. You can really see he's stepped up as a leader on that team as well. Yeah. And the the foreign exchange student Vladimir Bernard, mm -hmm. he's a foreign exchange student from France. Mm -hmm. and he's been playing very well. He had three assists in the game against South Bend Riley the other day. Yeah. yeah. But they won that game seven to nothing. Yeah. Uh, Argus girls had a tough one on Saturday. Heartbreaker. I mean, they were down 3-0, and they came back to tie it by halftime. Mm -hmm. And then they lose 4-3. to Only one goal in the second half, and it was scored by Warsaw. So they lose 4-3, to but this team is 5-2-1. Two, two losses to John Glenn and Warsaw. Pretty Two pretty good teams. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the one tie was against Plymouth. Um, again, I, I don't see why they wouldn't be the favorite in their sectional. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Lily Hines is the best player in the sectional. I think she's probably the best player, though. NISC. I mean, she has just been, you know, two more goals on Saturday against a good Warsaw team. Yeah. If anything, I think she's she's better than she was last year, and that's saying something. She was the RTC Player of the Year last year. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there there's no reason to, you know, throw out the season or anything like that for the Argus girls. I mean, they're, you know, their losses are to right. some really good teams. And Coach Joe Stone will keep his team focused and humble. Mm -hmm. I mean, they will, they will not get... Big heads. They 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 will be very focused by the time we get to, you know, sectionals week in that first week in October. Yeah. That, I, I have no doubt about that. And a big game coming up on Saturday morning, starting at 10 a.m. against Eastbrook at yeah. Eugene Snyder Field before the boys tournament. Yeah. They play Eastbrook 10 a.m. Saturday. So you got five soccer games coming up at yeah. Eugene Snyder Field coming up on yeah. Saturday. One girls game and four boys games. And that uh, that Eastbrook, I think this is going to be about the third time that they've played, but that has uh, quickly become a uh, pretty big rivalry. That was a big turning point in their season last year when they yeah. won at Eastbrook. I think it was two to one, and they yeah. they were down one zero in the second half, and they came back to win that game mm -hmm. playing on a turf field. And that that seemed to be kind of the the turning point in their season last year. Yeah, yeah, it really propelled them and made it all the way to semi state. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so it'd be interesting. Um, 
how, how are the Zebras doing? I, I know they've had some uh, tough results here the last uh, yeah, week or so. Yeah, you know, they, you know, they lose at home to Culver, and um, they've been kind of struggling a little bit since. You know, they, they, they went to Oak Hill the other night, and that game was tied 1-1, and then the Lightning came, and that was... Well, that stinks because you really would have liked to have seen that match through. Uh, they go to Marion. We're taping this on Thursday. They're going to Marion Thursday night to play the Lady Giants. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how they do there. I think that's a new addition to the schedule. Uh, again, uh, you know, Coach Coach uh, Chantal Rensberg has talked a lot about finishing mm -hmm. the other day. You mm -hmm. know, we, you know, we, we we pass and pass and pass, but we've got to be finished. We've got to put it in the back yeah. of the net. And uh, I'm not sure it's, you know, somebody's got to figure it out. I mean, I don't think mm -hmm. it's natural for any of their kids. So, you know, Emmett Hodeshell stepped up and scored that goal against Oak Hill again uh, on Monday on uh, Tuesday. But I'd like to see uh, maybe more more girls finish be able to finish at the net. Yeah. I'm you know, I, I did that. I was there for that Culver game and, and filmed that. And it seemed to me, and I'm not knocking on anybody, but it seemed to me they had shots on goal. Mm -hmm. But like you said, the finishing part of it, and, and maybe there just wasn't quite the umph behind their shots, yeah. you know, to get those past the goalkeeper that they could use. Right, and don't don't play pity pat with, with the ball. Right, I mean, right. One touch, bam, yeah. kick it. Yeah, yeah. So I... I you know, I would I would have to say, and I didn't have the stats, but I would have to say they probably had more shots on goal than Culver did. Yeah. But Culver's were were more, uh, you know, powerful, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's give credit to Sophia Heath from Culver, the goalie. Oh yeah. Two two PK saves on the second half. Yeah, I've not seen uh, I've not seen a, a goalie save two mm -hmm. in game PKs like that in you know in a, in a regular game. Yeah. And Rochester now got an injury to, as we mentioned earlier in the cross country segment of the show, Kendall Bradley, who's mm -hmm. you know a very important part of this team. You know, Kendall was kind of a has been kind of a sweeper, kind of a defender. She's mm -hmm. kind of moved up the field and has really helped out the offense this year. Hopefully, Kendall can back, get back soon. Yeah, yeah, and they're going to need it. So yeah, we talked about that Culver team. Uh, you know, they're they're having some uh, success this year. Well, what a year they're having! I mean, to win at Rochester, boy, that that was big. I think Coach AJ Nisa nice that was the first time they'd beaten Rochester since he's been coach. And then they come out. They you know they go to, they travel two counts the other night and win six to one. Mm -hmm. and this is a good team. Giselle Villegas had two more goals against uh, Couts. Mm -hmm. uh, Kaylee Hamilton had two goals and three assists. Yeah, you got a young kid in Ka uh, Cassidy Banks, a freshman, playing really really well. You got another young freshman, Maddie Hamilton, playing really really well. And Sophia Heath is clearly in, <laughs> clearly up to the task as a goalkeeper. I mean, wow, this is an interesting team. I mean, the only problem is they're in the same sectional with Argus, but. Uh, you know, the fact that they beat Rochester, a sectional opponent, that's a great sign. Yeah, it's a great sign, and, and you never know. I mean, you got to play each game, and a lot of it's going to depend on, you know, when and if they meet, you know, the Dragons, and, and if maybe they'll meet the Zebras again, but uh, I was impressed. Right. Yeah. I, think, I think that LaVille teams, by the way, if you want to look ahead, LaVille's a little bit more formidable this year than they were last year, yeah. too. I think they're going to be pretty solid. They're going to be right there in the mix. But, That's uh, going to be an interesting section. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting really section. Is. We'll have a little bit of a preview coming up on Monday night when Argus travels to Rochester. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not uh, it's not maybe going to be a walk away for Argus. You know, mm -hmm. if they win it, they're going to earn it. Right. Rochester's deep. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're not going to wilt mm -hmm. uh, in the weather. And we're expecting hot, by the way, we're expecting hot weather again on Monday. So yeah, yeah. Run mid-80s to 90, somewhere in there. Nice, yeah. Well, let's see maybe I'll crawl up there on that uh, mm -hmm. tower again. That didn't work too bad, so mm -hmm. we'll see if we can do that, maybe get that game for you. Mm -hmm. um, to, 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 to try to think through the area, that's all the girls. Well, uh, Valley uh, doing much? Contact tracing has just ripped through that team. Yeah. They haven't played a game in over a week, so hopefully okay. they can get back on the field on the pitch soon. Okay, so uh, boy side of things, the Zebras... Um, you know they, they they were playing so well they had won three in a row and then they you know they go up two zero on Wabash and it's looking like a fourth straight win. Then the Apaches come back and win that game four to three in overtime, score with about two and a half minutes left in the second overtime to beat them. And it's been kind of a tailspin since then. They lose five to two at home to Winnemac on Saturday, and then they lose four to one to Manchester on Tuesday. Now obviously you, you travel to Manchester, that's going to be a tough assignment sure. any year. But uh, again, I don't think scoring goals has been the problem. I think it's been preventing them. Mm -hmm. It's been. And kind of the issue just defensively, they're they're I think they're a little thin, and yeah. I think their inexperience has been kind of exposed a little bit, maybe. Yeah, we we knew with uh, Pickens up front, you were going to be pretty solid, mm -hmm. you know, on the offensive side of things. So, and you know, Coach Roke's probably pulling his hair out because you know he's 
defense. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Let's let's hold them and and then score a couple goals. And so he's probably, you know, really trying to work through that as as best that they can. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's been disappointing, especially you know. Uh, but I guess can we talk about we might as well talk about Winnipeg now. Sure. They're playing very very well. They beat mm-hmm. Lakeland Christian seven zero. That's a really impressive win. Lakeland Christian's not that bad. Yeah. And they go to Rochester win five to two. You know, Thomas Fearens has been playing well. Alex Stark's been playing really well. Uh, Housinger, I mean, this is a pretty nice team. And, you know, Max Murray, we see him on the football field kicking extra points. He's mm-hmm. he's 15 for 15 in extra points. He's one of the best goalkeepers in the area, too. Yeah. I think Winamac's biggest challenge throughout the year is just making sure everybody can play. Yeah. I mean, you know, whether it's volleyball or football or, or soccer, I mean, they're, they got some really talented kids. Yeah. Let's, let's just keep them on the field. Yeah, this this is one of Chad Burton's best teams that he's had at Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe maybe the best. So are you? Uh, what are you thinking? You know, we talk about that sectional at Caston, and uh, boy, you know Culver's struggling, Caston's uh, struggling. You know, Winnipeg looking like maybe it, it, they're. I, I think you know I think Winnipeg and North Miami are the two best teams right now, but winnemac has got a win over North Miami already. So look, I'd say the Warriors are the favorite at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure. I'd, Bet the bet the farm on it yet, but I, I think pretty. I think their their chances are pretty good right now. Yeah, how about a new floor in your apartment? Would you bet that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, inside joke. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So the Warriors. I mean, you know, boy, it's 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 nice to have a, a couple of really good teams. We're going to talk about the football team in a little bit, and um, you know, we talk about that cast and uh, soccer team struggling a little. Uh, you know, to get the wins, but you, you can't really fault the effort, I guess. Yeah, and again, you know, that's that, that was ter- that was bad bad luck the other day. I mean, traveling too north wide on Tuesday, that's a really good game that will prepare you for the 1A tournament, and then the lightning hits at halftime and the game's over. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they, that was a game where they really needed, uh, you know, a good 80 minutes uh, against a good team like that would have really helped. Uh, it's a team where they're kind of trying to mix in some you know, young kids and some veterans. It seemed like it's more of a veteran crew in the back and some young kids up front. Uh, you know, Rowan Jellison's been leading the team and scoring all year, but I really like that freshman, John Aguilar Mendez. I think we've mm-hmm. talked about him quite a bit. He's mm-hmm. he's a really good, technically sound player. Mm-hmm. And then you've got two really good athletes back there in the Zyder brothers, Caden Talon. And then, you know, Brady Evans and Caleb Stinson have helped out in that back area as well. Uh, and then Bailey Simpleman's a really solid goalkeeper. Uh, I, I might say that the problem with Cast is the opposite of the problem that Rochester has. Uh, with Rochester, I'm not worried about them scoring goals. I'm worried about them preventing goals. Sure. With Cast, I'm not really worried about them preventing goals. I'm worried about them uh, with that offensive punch. Right. Where, where are they going to get it from? Right. On a consistent basis. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anybody else? <sighs> yeah, and then Valley, you know, a nice win at North Miami the other day. They went 3-1. to one. John Ruiz yeah. came back from his knee injury. I think he had been out for two weeks. He scores two goals. Look. In midseason form, and Gino, Gio Arriaga scored a goal for Valley as well. Uh, this is a team that's been playing pretty good soccer. Yeah. And uh, I think they play Rochester next week. I want to say next Wednesday at Rochester. I think it's going to be a pretty competitive game. Yeah. That'll be interesting to see how that goes. Yeah. I, I really have been hearing some good things coming out of Valley with their with their boys soccer. Yeah, I think I think you know, from a team speed standpoint, I think they're pretty pretty fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, now we'll see how. Uh, they play against a possession-oriented team like Rochester. Can they can they stay, right. you know, with them? You know, Valley had lost to McConaughey three to nothing last week, but that was a nice that, to, to win at North Miami. That was a nice bounce back win for them. Mm-hmm. Okay, that it. That's it. Okay, well we'll uh, take a break and we'll come back and we'll talk some football here on Talking Sports with Val. Thanks for tuning in. Be back here in just a moment. The Winning Edge is your local provider for all your sport and school athletic needs. From providing customizable sportswear to engraving trophies, the Winning Edge strives to help teams find their edge on the playing field. Call 574-223-6090 or visit their website at www.thewinningedgeathletics.com. Steve Moore Agency has been proudly providing comprehensive insurance solutions all across Indiana since 1974. Whatever your insurance needs are, Steve Moore Agency will create customized insurance solutions to guarantee complete protection of all your assets at an affordable price. 
Call now at 574-223-3010 to see what Steve Moore Agency can do for you. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val. We're going to wrap things up here, segment number three, with some football talk as we move into uh, Friday Night Lights for week four. Can you believe that? Week four already? Uh, you know, we had a, a really exciting week three. Uh, some teams picked up some big wins. Uh, Valley continues to roll. Rochester picked up their second win of the season. Pioneer picks up a big win on the road uh, at uh, LaVille, previously unbeaten LaVille for the Panthers. That's a, that's a big win, getting them off of the winless schneid. Um, Culver was out last week. Um, Caston, unfortunately, uh, fell short against Triton. Uh, and then Winnemac, uh, they picked up a, uh, a game after their uh, North White game got canceled. They went to Manchester, and they picked up another win, so they're undefeated on the season. So... Let's start off with the Rochester Zebras. They went on the road with a 1-1 one one record and uh, were going to Whitco last Friday and they ended up beating the Wildcats 35-6. That Wildcats 6 point, you know, that touchdown came late. Uh, they didn't get a chance to kick the extra point. Clock was running. They ran out of time. So Yeah, the clock um, should stop. I'm yeah, probably uh, should have once they... Clock was supposed to sh stop on scoring plays. I don't think anybody the running was clock. Gonna, I don't think anybody minded, though. Yeah, nobody was going to complain. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so they pick up the win. They go to 2-1, and one, and uh, they have Wabash come into town uh, this week. The uh, Yeah, 0-2. They didn't play last week. Right. So uh, could they get another win? Right. What was interesting is that Whitco came on kind of like a little, little bit of a spread look the other night, and Rochester had not seen any of that on film. Mm-hmm. So they, Rochester had to make you know kind of some quick defensive adjustments on the line and in their alignment and you know coach you know I talked with coach Ron Schaefer he was really happy with how they did it and he, he goes we really didn't make that many it was just kind of more of a you know kind of a reading your keys thing not necessarily an alignment thing yeah and he goes we he goes we pretty much played our base defense for 48 minutes and we held them to you know six points the whole game a touchdown in the last play of the game I think. We had something like four first downs, and two of the four first downs came on that last drive, which again, by then there was a running clock, and Rochester was up thirty-five to nothing. Yeah. Um, so that uh, yeah, D, I, I know I know it's easy to talk about Alex Deming. I mean, yeah. we, we we've got to talk about him. I mean, right. according to there seems to be some d debate on how many rushing yards Alex has. I guess when you're that prolific, I have him with seven hundred eighty-six rushing yards. The guy who leads the state is a guy from New Prairie who has seven eighty-nine. Uh huh. So Alex is just three yards off the lead in the state. Okay. But some people think uh, right, there seems to be some confusion over the Rochester side, who how many he has. But we're, we're kind of working on that right now. I'm, yeah. I'm showing him my numbers, and they're showing me theirs. We'll, we'll see if we can get to a number. But Still not bad. I mean, he's played I had him, three I, games. I had him with 260 yards rushing last week. He had 176 yeah. yards rushing in the second quarter. Yeah. I mean, that was just unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, he didn't even play uh, fourth quarter. I don't even know how much he played in the third quarter. Yeah, he Middle. played about yeah right right. He played the first drive in the third quarter, and he did, and he was taken out midway through that drive. Mm -hmm. So he was taken out with about eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Yeah, seven minutes to go in the third quarter. I mean, he was. So, so he most was of just, those yards were first half yards. Yeah, yeah. And you know they they you know it was a zero zero game about seven minutes or about seven, zero zero about eight minutes to go in the first half. Coach, you know Schaefer calls timeout and. It was just kind of a pep talk, like, come mm -hmm. on, guys, you, you know, you, you got to, you know, yeah. this is not how we play. We've got to be better than this. You've got to hit your blocks precisely, and you've got to hit those holes hard. I mean, it, it wasn't just one guy that he was talking to. It was the whole team, and, man, the next play is a 76-yard touchdown run. I mean, it was, I mean, and, and you know, I was talking with Alex Deming, and he goes, the wall just formed perfectly for me. I just, mm -hmm. it just happened, and, he, and it just went right through, and it was a, that on that trap play, mm -hmm. seventy six yards later, it's seven nothing, and then then he's got what a twenty three yard touchdown run. It was called like the I think they call it a down bone play, which is kind of a semi trap type of play. And then the next time he carries the ball, another seventy six yard touchdown run, and another trap. I mean, mm -hmm. it was just it happened that fast. Three touchdowns in yeah. four minutes, and he's got a, a full complement now in the backfield. Everybody's back, I think, and, and yeah. healthy. So that yeah, getting Lou now and and Faverda back, yeah. And, and Schlosser, I mean, 
it's a nice it's a nice three man combo there at the wing back spot. I mean it's right. you know no 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 Llewellyn brothers, but it's still a pretty good right pretty good group and and each of them kind of helps out and you know gets one or two big carries in the day. I, you know in fact I, that second drive that that was without Deming on the field at all and that was you know a really nice drive with Faverda getting and Luna getting a lot of carries. So yeah, I thought that was that was a really nice sign. You gotta have uh, those options back there to keep the defense honest, so they can't just focus completely on Demi. And yeah. it really shows because I, I think they did, like you said, they, they kind of got off to a little bit of a slow start, and that timeout really did make a difference. And mm-hmm. once they got rolling, I mean, they okay, yeah, we can do this. Yeah, and yeah. I think that was kind of their their mindset after that. It was like, oh yeah, yeah, we're better than we were last year. Yeah, yeah, and that can happen sometimes when you're on the road and you haven't won a road you haven't won a road game in a long time. They they don't a lot of these you know sophomores yeah they won one game I mean yeah. you know so they're they're still trying to figure out how to win yeah and 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 they did that and you know just it was the fact but the fact that they they didn't have to do really anything spectacular defensively I think Coach Shaver said they blitzed once the entire game and they got a sack Alex Demi yeah. Kramer was sacked yeah uh, uh, the quarterback uh, was it uh, Craig the quarterback mm-hmm. said. so so. But again, they don't have to blitz. They don't have to do anything too fancy, they, or at least they didn't do anything too fancy mm-hmm. against Whitco. Mm-hmm. Now they play Wabash this week, and it's a whole other type of challenge because Wabash is going to spread it out. Uh, Wabash played last played two weeks ago against Alexandria. They lost twenty five to thirteen. They ran sixty one offensive plays in that game, thirty one runs, thirty passes. Mm-hmm. So a nice balanced offense. Wabash's quarterback is a sophomore, Isaac Wright. Uh, a lot of people know Isaac's father, Paul Wright. He is the boys' basketball coach at Wabash. Isaac is a really good young athlete. Played some varsity basketball last year as a freshman. Now he stepped in as the quarterback. Uh, he's a lefty. Uh, a lot of you know he was 23 for 30 against uh, Alexander, so he's pretty. He's very accurate. Um, a lot of these, but a lot of their plays are just kind of one, two, three, get it out of there. Mm-hmm. Quick screen passes to the you know screen passes, screen passes to the wide receiver, wide receivers, bubble screens. Uh, they're going to get it out quick. They're going to have four four receivers. Let the wide receivers go to work. Yeah. So you go back to that Knox game with the zebras, and that was one there in the first half where they had a lot of success throwing the ball. Seemed to be a little better after the half with yeah. the Rochester DBs and that secondary uh, did a lot better yeah. job. So they're yeah. going to be tested big time. Coach, Sha- yeah, right Coach Shaver talked a lot about how much the pass coverage has improved. Mm-hmm. Even from the first half to the second half of the Knox game, and then continuing through the Whitco game, I mean, Whitco did, did not a lot pass. of pressure from from Whitco on right. the passing side. Right, and they're not much of a passing team anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a Wabash team that will air it out. I mean, this yeah. coach Hanley. I mean, he's he's a passing type coach. I mean, yeah. there's no doubt. I mean, they they will you know they will air it out, and they will have different types of passing plays too. This will be the most sophisticated passing game that Rochester has faced, and a lot of that has been. I know a lot of Rochester's practice defensively this week has been kind of how you handle these plays and keeping guys in front of you and and you know gr- you know pr- you know a bunch of helmets on the ball. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how Wabash reacts to that week off. You know, will they be rusty? Will right. they be rested? Will mm-hmm. you know how will that uh, affect them coming back after a week off? Right, and I think if you're Wabash, you're probably saying, "Hey, we can't let Marshall fish back and." Brady Beck get to our quarterback. We got to get the ball out there quickly and not let their pass rush get to us because the pass rush has been improved for Rochester as well. Yeah, yeah. But boy, Alex Deming and Eli Eli Swango at the inside linebacker spots yeah. they have been playing really well. And then you know Gavin McKee has moved from an inside linebacker spot to an outside linebacker spot. He's playing really well too mm-hmm. on defense. Yeah, and he, he's helped out on the offensive side of things mm-hmm. as well. He's yeah. he's running the ball well when he gets called. So. Yeah, yeah. We should yeah, yeah throw him in the mix on offense. Yeah, yeah. I heard his name a couple times on offense. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be a, an interesting one. Wabash trying to get uh, in the win column. Of course, you know, obviously a big TRC matchup, Rochester and, uh, and Wabash. And, you know, who knows? You know, if Rochester can pick up a win, go 3-1, and one, they'd be 2-1 and one in the conference. Or, uh, yeah, they'd be 2-1 and one in the mm-hmm. conference. Uh, you know, that'd be a uh, nice little start for the Zebras. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, th- the season... I mean, the schedule is not looking as daunting as maybe it did at the start of the year. Yeah. We won't mention what your tweet or what you texted me. We'll, we'll talk about that maybe a couple of games from now. We'll see how the next few games go. But, yeah, yeah I mean, it. Uh, yeah, the, obviously the, the following week is going to be huge coming up with the Bell game. And 
Mm -hmm. you know, that's a, a, let's just go right into it. Mm -hmm. Tiffany Valley has, you know, just been putting up gaudy numbers. Yeah. They, they win 45 to nine against Peru. They've scored 40 plus in every game of the year so far, three and zero on the season. Mm -hmm. Uh, they go to Manchester, actually Manchester comes to them this week. Uh, you know, so they could possibly come in to Rochester in a, a week from today, 4-0, just rolling on offense. Right, they moved up to number 11 in the poll, so the pollsters are starting to pay listen attention to, to them. And li yeah. Listen to you, yeah. Yeah, they're li yeah. Um, but, you know, they, 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 they fell behind 2 to nothing in the first quarter on the other night, and, you know, that was a Peru defense. It was really aggressive. They were getting after it. Uh, they were blitzing a lot, and they mm -hmm. sacked Branson McBriar in the end zone for a safety early. Uh, but I think Valley kind of wore him down in the second half. Jamison Virgil's just playing great football. Four more rushing touchdowns. And plus what he does as I mean, if he, I mean, if he never played offense, he'd be a great player just because of what he does at the outside linebacker spot on defense. He is fierce there as well. And, you know, um, I mean, they're, again, it's, they're not relying on one guy to carry mm -hmm. them. I mean, Rex Kirkenstein had his best game of the season against Peru, but, I mean, he's... And he had a touchdown catch, but you know he's he could he's a game breaker, mm -hmm. you know. And then Brain Shepherd didn't have maybe necessarily his greatest game against Peru, but he's a game breaker. Mm -hmm. And then Virgil, and then Nate Parker, just a lot of weapons to get to deal with. And mm -hmm. uh, and then that offensive line when you talk about DJ Step and 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 Wade Melanson on yeah. the right side, boy, yeah. they, they are tough. And then Grady McGriff at center. Boy, you know they're you know they're going to go right when they need some yards, but mm -hmm. good luck trying to stop it. Yeah. And I mean, boy, 45 points and a running clock at Peru. I mean, that's a team that beat you last year. Right. I mean, that's, that's a really good win. I, I, they I think held it says, 19 points last year. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, and, and you, know, Peru, you know, Peru gets a touchdown in the third quarter. Maybe they're, th you know, it's, they get it to 22 to 9, and maybe they're getting back in the game, and then boom, Virgil, 68 yard touchdown run, and they get the momentum right back. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's what good teams do. That when. When you think you when you think you're getting back in the game, they say no. Yeah, yeah. No, hold on a minute. We're, we've got this. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, it's saying that the team is mature and confident. And you know, mm -hmm. Joel says Neros is out, so they put DJ E step in at middle linebacker, and the defense doesn't seem to miss a beat. Yeah, I don't think that he would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's he's a good you know good person to have as a backup linebacker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And this team is deep. And you know, another kid we don't talk about too is Hunter Ehrman. He just. Mm -hmm. Whatever you ask him to do, he does. Mm -hmm. Running back, I mean, he, I think he had one t one rushing touchdown, two two point conversions. Again, he's he's another weapon, and then yeah. and then he's a really good safety on defense. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of interesting to see you know what happens in in a week. Right, the computer polls like I so the I'm starting to look at the computer polls a little bit. I start to I don't look at them until Labor Day. Mm -hmm. And even this year, I'm not sure how. Too much to care about the computer polls, only because teams have games cancel all the time because of COVID. You just don't know who's who's playing, who's playing who, and who's who's at full strength and who's not. Right. But right. the computer polls like Valley as well. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Mishawaka Marion did beat Bremen the other week mm -hmm. did, on Friday night and last week, and they look more like Mishawaka Marion from what we hear. Mm -hmm. But that is right now. It's it going to be interesting. Like, it seems like Valley has narrowed the gap a little bit. Yeah, they have. And like you said, it's going to be a matter of, you know, not only staying healthy on, you know, injury-wise, but also staying healthy, uh, you know, as far as quarantines and all that stuff goes. Yeah. Now Valley plays Manchester this week. Manchester's coming off 35-18, lost to Winnemac last week. This Manchester team has big-time weapons. And you talk about Braxton Ream and Seth Gurdy. Mm -hmm. I mean, though. Now, Reem is as fast as any running back in the conference, and Gurry might be as fast as any wide receiver in the conference. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had a 72-yard touchdown reception against Winnemac last week, and that's a pretty good Winnemac secondary. Mm -hmm. And then, you I mean, their number two receiver, Dylan Stroud at Manchester, he'd be number one on most teams. Sure. I mean, he's really good. And then Brock Casper, geez, he's only a junior, but he's as experienced a junior quarterback as you'll see. He's, he's big time as well. He's really stepped up his game. Mm -hmm. So I, from Manchester's standpoint, I think they can score points uh, but can they keep up defensively? That's going to be the big question. Yeah. Because that is a Winnipeg team that had over 250 yards rushing against Manchester last week, and they're going to face a Valley rush, rushing attack that has been on fire. I mean, they have been just yeah. steamrolling teams. Right. Well, let's talk about that Winnipeg manchester game. Winnipeg goes on the road uh, against a uh, TRC team and wins 35-18 after, you know, I think that 
came about about Thursday afternoon. I mean, there wasn't a lot of prep time for either team. Yeah, something. Like, I think. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah. And uh, you know that's uh, for Coach Hendricks. That's a big win. That's a, that's a good win for that Winamac team. Yeah, I think, and I think that was a, a good case of conditioning and just uh, you know the running game. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, uh, you know, another hundred yard game for Hayden Clark. Two more touchdown runs. You know, Russell Compton sixty five yards rushing, two touchdowns. Xavier Holahan's been running well. Jaden Terry's been playing. Offensively and defensively, he has been a monster. I think I think you can almost compare Jane Terry to Win at Winnemac to what James and Virgil is doing at Valley. I mean, mm -hmm. offense, defense, he has been everywhere. He has been a force uh, on both sides of the ball. I think he had something like 70, 70 plus yards rushing in it uh, against Manchester. So, uh, boy, this is a good team. Twenty, you know, twenty seniors. Braden Heater is another kid. He's another senior. We don't talk about him that much. He had two more catches mm -hmm. the other night. I talked with Coach John Hendricks the other day. He said Braden Heater's got the best hands on the team, which mm -hmm. is saying something. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, as of right now, they don't have a game for Friday. Right. Uh, Laville had to cancel, and so far, I know there have been a couple different teams that were discussed, and, and mm -hmm. one of them was about six hours away, and I don't yeah. think that was an option. No, yeah, to put uh, a bunch of kids on a bus for yeah. a long bus drive, no, no. to the no. southern part of this, to the, the you know, near Louisville. Yeah, yeah, that was maybe not the best, I, not anything that they were willing to consider, so it yeah. looks like no game, and I think Winamax also had... Some quarantining issues, it, it wouldn't have been enough to prevent them from playing, but it, it might have affected their numbers. Yeah. Yeah, it would be nice to see if they could pick up somebody between now and then. But uh, Check your local listings. We, we, sure. we, we probably think they're not playing, but there's yeah. no definite. Well, you never know. I yeah. mean, if things happen... Uh, Check your local sports writer's Twitter account. What was it? Lewis Cass picked up the Delta game at like 2.30 on Friday yeah. last week. Yeah. I mean, just mm -hmm. crazy things have been happening, mm -hmm. you know, just like that. and. I, I think the <laughs> that's where you say you're picking up a team called Delta, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> they got the Delta, the Delta, the Delta Eagles, not the Delta variants. Yeah, <laughs> but I, you know, I, I think that was a good pickup to get Manchester last week because you know, no offense to North White, that wasn't going to be much of a game. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think going over there and playing Manchester, that was long, better for yeah. Lamar. Long term, they're going to benefit, but short term, they're going to they're going to suffer by not playing with a good Laville team. That really mm -hmm. stinks. Yeah, I know, and that that uh, you know we'll just go right into Laville. So mm -hmm. Pioneer, you know, coming off of a, a tough first two weeks, they finally get Brock Robinson back and are able to uh, eke out a win against a very good, very good Laville team. Uh, yeah. You know, they only scored twelve points, but against Laville, that's that's like scoring forty against most teams. Yeah, so. you know, Adam Berry and Matt Bianco and that coaching staff. Yeah, I think they know what they're doing because mm -hmm. you know you're down. You know, you're down seven to nothing at halftime, and Laville has a goal line stand late in the first half, and boy, you're not, and you're probably thinking, here we go again. But boy, they they stuck with it, and for for Coach Barry to not only get Brock Robinson back, but then instead of putting him at fullback, basically putting him at quarterback, mm -hmm. and have him take kind of a wildcat wildcat snap, and then kind of run the the wing T out of it, run the same wing T plays, but out of a shotgun. Mm -hmm. And to do that based on the fly, wow! <laughs> uh, and to do that against a good Laville defense, mm -hmm. that is something. That, that is something they should really be proud of. There, I mean, Ryland Toloza with a big touchdown run early in the fourth quarter that got him to seven six, and then the game winning touchdown run by Brock Robinson late forty one carries in that game. I mean, he, <laughs> I saw that. That I mean, is crazy. Yeah, that is just that's something. And uh, uh, but uh, you know, Logan Smith has been running well. Toloza. Mm -hmm. And Robinson, I mean, that's kind of what they've got to deal with. But it's, you know, it's interesting. I talked with Adam Barry, and he said it's kind of not too much different from when we had Ezra Llewellyn play quarterback. It's not mm -hmm. too much different from when we had Jack Kaiser play quarterback right. in terms of the, the plays we have available at our disposal. Right. So kudos to Brock Robinson. I mean, <laughs> well, he, he had to get healthy in a hurry because that's a, a 41 carries. That's a big, big, big time workload. But it's going to be, a, gotta be a satisfying win. And they held down that Laville rush, rushing game, too. I mean, that, they did they did very well defensively. Yeah, and, and defense has not been an issue for Pioneer this year. It's yeah. it's been well, a holding on to the ball and and b you know scoring points. Yeah, you know, they they doubled up their <laughs> season total so far yeah. in twelve. Yeah, and and when you've got again with the the Wildcat snap, well, it's a way to avoid. I mean, a lot of the problems were just with the center quarterback exchange. Those mm -hmm. were the fumbling issues. Right. So. It seems like they've they've got that under control now. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so, uh, you know, they have another opportunity. They're going to be on the road at Caston this week. Uh, the Comet's coming off of a, uh, a loss right. at Triton, 35-16. Uh, you know, they looked really good against West Central, and but, you know, we always say you can't judge a season based on a, a West Central mm -hmm. game because they're not really that great. But, right. uh, you know, Caston's had a, co a couple of tough weeks, and, it's not going to get any easier for the Comets hosting yeah. Pioneer this and, week. And you look at what Cast did offensively against Triton. I mean, gee, they had over 250 yards rushing in that game. Mm -hmm. I mean, Grant Hickel's been playing some great football. 130 yards rushing, another 120 yards rushing for Sam Smith. I mean, the the the, the triple options working the way it should be. Mm -hmm. It's just those fumbles. Mm -hmm. Three fumbles against Triton yeah. on the road in the conference. You just can't have that. Mm -hmm. And the defense has been struggling too. The, obviously, the defense had kind of had their backs put against the wall because of the turnovers on offense. But defense has got to step up too. Again, Grant Hickel and Sam Smith—they're not only doing the majority of the work on offense; they're big time on defense as well. But right. I think they need more help. I think they've been working a lot. You know, I was talking with Coach Will Porter the other day. He goes, "We've been working a lot on the backside pursuit because I mean, he he saw the Pioneer film against Laville too, and he sees that they're they're running." The, you know, kind of some wing T type plays that when you talk about backside pursuit, it's those misdirection plays. They run that counter at you, and your backside guys have to be have to be there, and it, mm -hmm. it can't be one guy to make the tag. That's got to be three or four guys. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the that's the interesting chess match here. I talked with Will Porter the other day. I said, "What did you make of that film that you saw with Pioneer and Laville?" And he goes, "It looked like the same offense with Jack Kaiser, except Brock Robinson's not the quarterback." Mm -hmm. He said that independently of what Adam Barry said. Yeah, who said kind of the same thing. So it's it's interesting. I mean, the, of what to expect here. So the cast and defense, I think, is going to be ready. But it's just now they've got to execute. Mm -hmm. They've got they can't let counter and trap just beat them to, to death because mm -hmm. you know Pioneer's going to run those plays really well. Yeah, yeah. In those in those plays where Brock Robinson you know reads his blockers really well. So yeah. that's going to be that's going to be the interesting kind of chess match in this game. And then from Pioneer standpoint, they've got to play some assignment football this week to stop, you know, Hickel and, and Smith. Yeah, probably a couple of the faster uh, backs that they're going to run into. I yeah, mean, they've got the speed, and they also have, uh, you know, they can run you over too. Yeah, and that's maybe one thing I've noticed besides Robinson. Uh, you know, outside of the front line guys, a lot of those DBs and, and running backs are a little on the small side for Pioneer. Mm -hmm. You know, 150 pounds, 160 pounds. Yeah. You know, it's like, oof. yeah. But they're not afraid to get into it. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's another thing Coach Porter talked about when you talk about the Pioneer defense. He goes, they tackle well. Mm -hmm. They and, and that's something we've noticed as well. They, they're just such a good tackling team. They don't miss tackles. Mm -hmm. And so Caston's got to be able to tackle at that level too if they want to compete with Pioneer. Maybe Jack Kaiser needs to uh, transfer some of that tackling ability to his uh, defensive mates at Notre Dame. They seem to yeah. struggle with that fact uh, <laughs> yeah. a little bit last week. I mean, yeah, but we're at the 25th anniversary of Caston's last win over Pioneer, 1996. 96. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to so, say yeah. the least. I mean, this is you know so at that's, home. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Not only 24 straight regular season wins, but I think five sectional games on top of that. Yeah. I mean, you'd have to say this would be the, you know, casting as, as high as they've been in a while. And, you know, Pioneer with a, a lot of new faces, you know, you'd have to say that would be the best opportunity they've had in a while. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. That one's going to be coming up from uh, Caston here in a little bit. Uh, the other uh, school in our area that we haven't really talked about much in the last few weeks because they haven't been playing is Culver. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they had two weeks off uh, with a COVID pause. Uh, they get West Central. They're going to be on the road at West mm -hmm. Central, but uh, not a bad way to try and get your season restarted, I guess. Right. They went back to practice on, uh, I believe it was Tuesday of this week, and uh, and uh, Coach Mike Zaner was pretty happy with the conditioning of his team. He said that they had a few players have been spotted around town riding bikes. Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't play football, so they were riding bikes. Yeah. So I guess a little socially distanced, so... That's a good sign. Um, so Coach Zayner said there were a couple of positive tests within the roster, and the whole team got contact traced, and mm -hmm. that's a 10-day thing. And that's, that was the Thursday before the South Central game, so that, that was two games minimum that they were going to be out. Mm -hmm. So they got back, and they would appear to be ready to play on Friday night, as far as we know. 
again, uh, you know, Shane Schumann getting, again, this is a team that's probably going to try to overpower West Central. Like, they should, they've figured to have a size advantage, you know, with Shane Schumann, uh, you know, kind of pounding away at them. And then, you know, the two Zaners, Alex and Austin, and then Brady, or uh, Hunter Evans uh, at the guard spot, just kind of taking the ball up the middle. And then, and then as, as they get, you know, as West Central gets accustomed to that, then you can try and run with the outside with Emiliano Ortiz and Blake Thompson. Yeah. I, I'd be interested to see, too. You, you talked about maybe the possibility of, of throwing the ball a little bit more. Uh, we haven't really had a chance to see much out of them to, to know if they're going to do that. But, uh, you know, they do have, uh, you know, some, some pretty good options out there. Mar- Marquez Anderson is, yeah. a, is a capable tight end. Yeah. So. You know, he's pretty good size. I don't know what he's up to now, but uh, probably 6'3 or so, I would yeah. assume. And Tucker Fisher's arm is fresh. Yeah. He hasn't. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hasn't been uh, overly uh, worked over the last couple of yeah, weeks, obviously. Yeah. So, I, I, I'd like to see that. I mean, I mm-hmm. I know that um, you know Zayner's offensive uh, scheme is pound pound mm-hmm. pound, but every once in a while, I'd like to see it throw the ball once. Mm-hmm. I'd also like to see them play good defense. Mm-hmm. I thought the North Judson game was a pretty good start. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the North Judson team that's been pretty explosive in their. Yeah, you only give nineteen to to a Judson team, right? North Judson scored then North Judson scored forty two against Cast and thirty four against North Newton. Yeah, so I mean the, that's pretty. I think I think the defense is improved. So let's see if they can shut down this West Central offense. From what we hear, West Central's dealing with some injuries. Mm-hmm. West Central's coming off a twenty to seven win over Tri County the other night, but two, uh, last week, but two weeks ago they lost to South Newton, and that was broke South Newton's long, long, long losing streak. So, right. uh, curious to see if this. Uh, from what we hear, the fullbacks now the quarterback. Uh, due to some injury issues, so yeah. Uh, but it's going to be a going to be a spread option look. So you're going to uh, have to uh, w- watch for that jet sweep. If Culver can stop the jet sweep that West Central likes to run, I think that, that could be the key to the game. Mm-hmm. But it's a big game, sectional opponent. I mean, it's right. a team they could wind up seeing later on. Yeah. Well, we'll see how that goes. You know, getting back on the field after a couple weeks, uh, will they be rested? Will they be rusty? Uh, you know, that's going to be the big thing. Yeah. See how that goes for the Cavaliers, but good to see them back on the field. Yeah, and uh, everybody was at practice the other day. The only, the only kid that wasn't there was a kid who had a soccer game. Good. Mm-hmm. Well, so uh, coming up next on uh, Channel 4, you'll have Rochester and Wabash. And then the other games that we'll have for you on RTC TV 4, we're going to have uh, Tiffany Valley in Manchester. And then uh, Caston hosting the Pioneer Panthers. We'll have uh, have those games for you as well. So, really looking forward to it. Anything uh, anything else you want to add before we go? No, not really. Uh, just uh, everybody stay safe. Yeah, we'll be back next week with more talk and sports with Val. I'm glad you could tune in and uh, tune in next as we have Rochester Zebras and Wabash Apaches on Channel Four for you. Thanks a lot. See ya. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Be great. Participate!